Here we are. Here we are. Episode one. Welcome to the Spinster Life podcast, the uh, podcast about spinsters through history. Even though there have been spinsters throughout time, there's still a stigma about not getting married. I'm Eva. I'm Amy. And we are not married. Not to each other, not to men, not to ladies. No one's put a ring on it. No one has put a ring on it. And we both are approaching the big four zero. We're like spinsters, capital S. We're going to embrace it. Who are we? Who are we trying it. to impress? I'm not trying to impress anybody. No, no, I'm too old to impress anyone. Um. So yeah. So this is our first episode, and we are glad you have found us. And we apologize uh, right off the bat. We're very sorry. Thank you for sticking around. So uh, what do we consider a spinster? Because I think actually the definition of spinster is a woman like under the age of 25 who isn't married. <laughs> <laughs> we are officially thornbacks, but... Thornbacks? Yes. Wait, what's that? That is the term for us, a woman over 25. Who thornback? Is, yeah. I just think of like razorback hogs. <laughs> 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 or like witches who have like spines sticking out of their backs, which is like, that's really mean. Spinster's not great either. I know, but Thornback, it's like I've been possessed and turned into like a gremlin or something. <laughs> yes, Spinster between the ages of 23 and 26. And Thornback is reserved for those 26 and above. Wow. Yep. Once you're a Thornback. No, there's, there's no, no there's no back. turning back. Yeah. <laughs> I want to, there's too many letters for me to get that on my license, plate, right? <laughs> yeah. Thornback. State of California. What can you do for me? That aside, not a very commonly known term. So no. we are going to stick with spinster. That's the heteronormative um, spinster. Yes. So, yeah, obviously things have changed. I mean, if you're a college educated woman these days, you get out of college, you graduate when? When you're like 21, 22? Somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah I, think I mean, I graduated when I was 21. Right. And turned 22. Undergrad. And then, you yeah. Know, if you go to grad school for a little while. Yeah. I graduated law school when I was 24. So I guess I could have gone to law school. You were already a spinster. But I could, I have a good year and a half to still get married. You did. But yeah, it's like known, supposedly, 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 supposedly that um, it's a hunting ground. Hunting mm. for men's. Mm. My spinster brain can't even wrap my little mind yeah. around that. It just doesn't, it does not compute. It's an expensive husband. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could be off getting a master's in like something, literally anything else. Literally anything. Something that you want to do. It could still be useless, yeah. but like at least you be well, having fun doing it. it. That you were getting um, a Mrs. degree, a Mrs. an MRS. MRS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I went to a women's college. They didn't sell those there. <laughs> I went to an art school. We're both not lesbians. We should be. We should be. We should be. But we're not. Women's college and an art school. Or we're really bad lesbians. Bad lesbians. That's the alternative name for this podcast. <laughs> bad lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have real lesbians on at some point. And then Definitely. They can tell us how problematic that is. Hold off on the mean comments until uh, we have a few episodes. Just give, give, us us a minute. give us a minute. <gasps> Leave Spencer life alone. Leave us alone. A couple other things. We don't know shit. This podcast is just as much about educating ourselves we're learning alongside you what we're hoping to do is you know just explore the unexplored spinsterhood that has led to all the spinsters that came before us highlight their stories exactly um, so who is the first spinster uh so we're talking about susan b anthony yeah anthony. susie <laughs> that she hated being called Oh, Susie. God, no. Do not call her Susie. Yeah, she probably fucking hated that. Uh, she might be the only spinster that's recently been in the news. Trump pardoned her. Trump pardoned her? Trump pardoned her. Bitch, you're lying. Uh, no. <laughs> Trump pardoned her. He okay, did. so Trump pardoned her for what? Yes. What did she do? So she uh, she went to go and vote before women were allowed to vote. Well, I mean, he is letting people, encouraging people even to vote twice. So yes. I guess it, it may be on brand. All right, so like, where is she coming from? Who is she? So she was born in 1820, okay. just to put in perspective. Okay. That's uh, before pre-Civil War. In the War. U.S.? In the U.S. Pre-Civil um, War. Okay. Way back. Way back. Yeah, way back, way back. Machine. Yeah. People in some parts of the country are still like, slavery is great. Uh, her family was not, though. Okay. They were abolitionists. They were abolitionists. Uh, and... They were Quakers, and I think Quakers are pretty, like, well So we're talking the North. They're from the North? They're from the North, yeah. Okay. I think maybe she was a New Yorker. I, Which tracks? Yes. How does she go from 
being a Quaker to being a woman who gets arrested for trying to vote in the 1800s. I mean, I think like they were setting the stage for this to happen her whole life because her family was friends with Frederick Douglass, the escape, escape slave. Bad. Yeah, just like having him over for dinner. Yeah. Talking about abolition. Yeah. So, you know. So I think, you know, that and then um, the church that she was involved in. They hosted a women's conference. The church hosted a women's the conference. The church hosted, yeah. They they oh, that's had really the interesting. they had the space for it. Yeah. So this church, it was the first Unitarian Church of Rochester, New York. Rochester, also in the news of late for the police up there putting, I <gasps> guess it was a spit hood or something. Oh yeah. May okay. or may not have been a spit hood over um, a young black man's head when they were trying to arrest him, which may or may not have been the reason for his death. And actually today. They uh, decided to finally call a grand jury. Hashtag indict. So Frederick Douglass would be appalled by this. Yeah, his... yeah. Rochester, so, get with it. Yeah, get with it, Rochester. You have you have a great history. You have a great history. So don't fuck it up. Yeah, stop fucking it up. So she was exposed to a lot of uh, social reform around women's issues. She attended a women's right convention with her family. With her family? Her whole family. Yeah, they were all on board with this. Yeah, so you're telling me it wasn't just like... She wasn't just, like, the oldest daughter in a family, and they were like, obey and get in line. They were like, we're with you. We're behind you. I wish kind families I'm, I wish families were like that today. I mean, I'm sure there was a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, I think what happened, so their, their family was, like, middle class. Yeah. And then there was, uh, like, a recession, and they lost all their money. Okay. So then she kind of had to, like, step up and support the family. Yeah. And she taught school. Okay. And that's kind of one of the paths that led her to moving away from being a Quaker. Yeah. They dress in a Quaker fashion, and uh, they say things like thee and thou. Yeah, I grew up in Maine, and we went to uh, one of the last active Quaker communities in the United States, and we went there and visited. Maybe they were Shakers. Shakers, Quakers. I, sure. We don't know shit, but... We don't we're, know shit. We're, we're We know nothing. Yeah, we know nothing. That's okay. But, I mean... Not, not relevant to this, so it's okay. But what's interesting, I mean, she's a teacher. I feel like teachers for... In history, teachers have been the people who have helped helped progress, help things move forward. I feel like it was one of the first socially acceptable jobs for women. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there must have been something going on at the school that she was teaching at because this oh, is like... a boarding school. Yeah, so she's like finally away from her family, maybe for like one of the first times. Yeah. And that's when she's like, oh, I don't have to dress like this. I can dress in a more modern way. I can speak in a more modern way. And then she found suffrage. She didn't even really want to vote. She didn't like, want Like that to wasn't vote. at first. Like that wasn't yeah. the first thought that she had about equality the first thought she had about equality was like what men get paid more than me how so and why teachers today are paid horribly back then they were probably also paid horribly and i would assume that the male teachers were probably making three four five times what she was making share your wages people tell other people what you're making equality i mean we're still not there we're not there but we get there through information, right? Right. So clearly she found out how much some of the male teachers were making. And was yeah. just like, this isn't going to fly. Her sister was also a spinster. Spinster sister. Spinster sisters. I feel like I read this, that she was one of the first women who said, you're, you're going to pay me the same wage as a man. That's amazing. Yeah, also back movement. then, I mean, women's labor has always been seen as like not having value. Right. right. And then once they moved into the workforce, it was seen as having less value because there's this like idea that women should just give of themselves, raise children, make food, look pretty, do all these things for free. Just yeah. give, give and, and give. And now that you're working and you're teaching at a boarding school, nonetheless, also being devalued, undervalued. So her sister was also a spinster. Yes. So that's pretty cool. And you said uh, her family were, uh, they were abolitionists. So yeah. she had other family members involved more in, like, that sphere. Yeah, I would say that the rest of her family, like, that was their primary cause. And not that it wasn't her cause, too. She yeah. still spoke about abolition. But I would say, like, her, like what she's known for yeah, is her main the, cause. Yeah, is, like, the women's rights and yeah. the suffrage. So she got involved in the temperance movement as well. So... How did she end up getting involved in the temperance movement? Uh, I think that was the Quakers, too. Okay. They're, they're pretty, yeah, they're pretty against, you know, I think having fun just generally. Yeah. I mean, they work hard and they get it done. Right. Yeah. They and don't they, have time for it, yeah. any of that, that shit. No frippery. No frippery at all. <laughs> None at all. None at all. Obviously, you can see how wages would be related to, like, suffrage. So how is temperance related to suffrage? In the in these times in history yeah. that Susan B. Anthony was alive, women basically had no rights in marriage. 
So if their husband was a drunk and he used all of their money and possibly her money to drink, like they didn't have any leftover to feed the kids or, you know, do anything. Yeah. A woman had no recourse. So this was this was kind of a way to just control men. If they can stop this bad it's habit, force then. them to like be men and support their families, which was their main role at the time. Yeah, and to keep them like keep them out of the pubs, yeah, keep them from and, being drunks, and support women if they were in these kind of situations to be able to have rights to their children. Right, because it was like so like mind blowingly controversial to think that like a woman could have rights. So like they had to like start chipping away at it. Right, it was mm-hmm. seen as. Oh, the house, that's man's pro- men's property. And the children, those are the men's children. And yes. she was just there to birth them and bathe them. And she could divorce her husband, but yeah, she wouldn't get anything out of it. Yeah. You have to stay in it and put up with it because there was no other alternative for yeah. you. Except for spinsterhood. If you got married legally, well, even if you didn't get married legally, you were not considered a person, basically. Mm. Yeah. Like, you didn't really have rights that people had. People right. meant white male Right. Okay, so she is working on the wage thing. She's working on the temperance thing. And the voting thing, I think that came pretty easily. Yeah. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't like, a, a big stretch for her. I think just her initial idea was, I don't need to vote. I just need to make as much money as a man. And then she was like, no, if I want to make as much money as a man, I have to be able to say who's in charge. Like, I have to have a say Yeah. in who gets elected and, and yeah. the policies. Yeah. And were people listening to her? Other women were listening to her. Other women were listening. Well, no, not even all other women, because there were women who were like, no, you can't, no, that'll take away your femininity if you have the right to Yeah, I watched Mrs. America. Yeah, right? It's kind of like that. There were still these women who were like, no, if you have this basic human right, then you won't be feminine anymore. And then society will explode. The OG, I'm a woman, but I'm not a feminist type. Yeah. She spent a lot of time just getting people to listen to her. She'd go in to speak at places and they'd be like, oh, well, woman, you can't speak. And she'd have to like spend the time telling them like why she should speak. Yeah. And just slowly chipping away at people. So like people were trying to discredit her, right? The one, they didn't want to listen to her just because she was a woman and she's up there talking and being like listen to me and they're like why the fuck should we what other issues was she having she also so she you know she's part of this movement she's talking to all these women and she starts to dress differently like she started to dress differently when she was teaching at the school and was moving away from being a quaker yeah and then she moved into dressing like some of the other women in the suffrage movement and she wore it was called a bloomer dress Okay. So basically, it was like pants, like very conservative pants. Yeah. Uh, like a like a uh, like a midi length dress over that. Okay. And it was scandalous. I feel like Samantha, um, the American Doll, has a similar outfit. I think it's okay because she was a child. Maybe. And for yeah. like for a grown to, like, woman play, to like play in, it was like yeah. a play dress, right? Yes, and kind of for Susan B. Anthony and her yeah. and her friends. Don't um, think I was rich enough to have one of those fucking dolls because I didn't. <laughs> man, I wanted one of those dolls, so <laughs> I never got one. Maybe I'll buy one for myself for my fortieth birthday. <laughs> Do it. You can go to the store. There's a whole experience. <laughs> So gross. You're gonna have like tea with the dolls and shit. <laughs> no, I followed this woman on YouTube who worked in the salon at an American Girl store. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. At the salon. Yep. I know. Uh, I know. I know. Some people like, have too much at, money. It's at once like a dream and a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so she's wearing these bloomer dresses. Um, scandalous. Scandalous. Scandal ensues. So instead of, like, focusing on what she's saying, yeah. that was just another way to be like... But you're wearing but, pants. But what about her emails? But what about her dress? Like, it has nothing to do with anything uh, she's she saying. She needs to touch up her roots. Why should I listen to her about healthcare policy? She yeah. has gray hair. Don't <sighs> you. And, like, the, I, the, the idea behind these dresses is, like, the suffrage movement. It's It was easier to move in. Easier to move. You're outside. You're marching. You're carrying signs. This this was a physical thing. This yeah. was, like, the protests of today where you're out there in the streets, except for they were out there for much longer, probably walk, walking much further. They weren't, yes. like, taking an Uber to a protest, right? <laughs> like, no. This no. is a physical endurance Yes. Endeavor. Suffrage yes. was an endurance sport. It Absolutely. was an endurance sport. And who wants chub rub? That's what the little pantaloons were for. Yeah, exactly. Raise your hand at home if you're a woman <laughs> who wears bike shorts under skirts and dresses. If you go on Amazon and you look at a pair of bike shorts, 99% of the reviews are all about how women wear them under dresses. So essentially, this was the original 
bike short because that's smart. Men get to be comfortable and wear things that are appropriate for what they're doing for the day, how they're working, right? what they're, how they're spending their leisure time. And have pockets. And have pockets. Ugh, that's why women love pockets. I love pockets. I love pockets. There's no pockets in the dress I'm wearing today. So cute, though. It, it is. So she. what does she do about this? So this this pisses me off to no end. So she she acquiesced. She was like, okay. I won't. Fine. I'll dress. I'll dress the way that you think I should dress. I mean, if you think about it, though, that's kind of like a Billie Eilish move, right? You're saying, like, look, if this is going to be so distracting, it's like like the one, like, Billie Eilish and how she wears, like, the oversized things because she doesn't want people to, like, be, quote, distracted by people. We mean dudes. Yeah. Another example is girls can't wear spaghetti straps. Like, for fuck's sake, it's a spaghetti strap, right? right? If your sons can't control themselves because there's a half inch less of fabric on a girl's shoulder than a regular tank top. Then you need to have a talk with then them. Then you have need to have a talk with your son, right? The, the girls aren't wearing pasties to school, so let's just, like, chill out. Um, right. So essentially, she acquiesced and said, look, you want to make a big fucking deal about this? Let's just stop it here. I'll put my fucking dress back on. You know, like, I don't know. It makes me angry, but at the same time, she just removed it from the conversation. It's a way to shut them up. Because it wasn't about dresses. It was no. about voting. It was so about she was voting. like, okay. It was about rights. It wasn't about, you know. Right. She's like, fine, I'll, my thighs will chafe and I'll just move on with my life. And move on, she did. Move on, she did. Okay, so she's chafing. She's watching, walking around <laughs> in the streets. She's in New York. It's probably hot as hell because summer's in the Northeast and just humidity and bullshit. So where are we now? Like, she's about how like what kind of age are we talking about she's still in her 20s she's like she's like yeah she's like getting up there a little bit okay, she kind of right. got into this a little bit later in so life she's been a spinster yeah um, and now she's a what a thornback yeah okay. now she's a yeah she's she's, she's a full full-blown thornback <laughs> full-blown thornback. <laughs> thornback but she has no fucks to give about that okay what kind of circles is she running in now uh, so, you know, she, she's getting into this and she's like broadening her horizons about what suffrage is and how it will impact her and women in the future. She was very aware of how this would affect women in the future, which I kind of love. Like, yeah, she was and there. She's full blown. We should get the vote. Yes. Yes. So she is, you know, there's there are other women who are starting to to talk about this and, and yeah. make this their, their suffrage cause. is gaining steam. Yeah. So. Uh, and you might have heard of her. So she teamed up with Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Oh, of course I've heard of her. Again, yeah. I went to a women's college. I've so, heard of her. I didn't, I don't know anything else. Yeah, I don't know anything. I didn't know anything else about her no. either. So she was not a spinster. Not a spinster. But she still had some great ideas. Yeah, about, we don't hate you if you're a married lady. No, no. No. I have plenty of married friends. And for the, for suffrage. to me about their husbands all the time. Right. And that's, yeah, we can, we can listen for a little bit. <laughs> we can, we can be sympathetic. Exactly. Because, and deep down, we're thinking, thank God I don't have to fucking deal with that. Yeah, exactly. When you're feeling bad about being single, just talk to a married woman. Um, okay, so she teams up with Elizabeth Cady Stanton. And they have a lifelong, this is the beginning of like a lifelong. Lady friendship. Yeah, lady friendship. Like, love they a lady were, friendship. This, they were like life partners. I love it. Like platonic life partners. Yeah, because like Katie Stanton, she, she's married. She got some babies. She got, right? Yeah, she got a lot of babies. She's got a lot going on in her life. And I wanted to read something right from Wikipedia, which yeah. we've promised that we we're going to do. Oh, so, hands down. Yeah, I'm going to do it right now. Because yeah. I just, I love this paragraph. It kind of outlines their whole friendship and like how long, like how intertwined they were. Yeah. Wikipedia says, after the Stantons moved from Seneca Falls to New York in 1861, a room was set aside for Susan in every house they lived in. I love it. One of Stanton's biographers estimated that over her lifetime, Stanton spent more time with Anthony than with any other adult, including her own husband. I'm waiting for all my rich friends to do that. Like, I have some friends that are, like, on the cusp of being pretty goddamn wealthy, um, and I am not. I live paycheck to paycheck. But I'm just waiting for them to have, like, fuck you money so they can buy their, like, houses in Malibu and their house in Manhattan Beach and wherever, Hawaii, and just get me a room. I mean, that's one of the benefits of being a spinster slash thorn back. Right. Yeah, you don't take up a lot of, room. yeah, you don't take up a lot of space. Yeah. You just need like one little the TBR, room. The TBR, the thorn right. back room. I the think thorn back everyone room. needs it. And like, you're a real, like, you're like a ride or die bitch if you get a thorn back room for your yeah. girlfriend. Yeah. I think it's great. I love it. Um. Yeah. And, and Susan too. So. Yeah. And also just like props to her husband, you know, to Katie Stan's husband, like, 
he's got to be pretty cool. I mean, I don't think, like, it was, a like, that romantic of a pairing. Oh, the husband and the wife? Yeah. Yeah, El- probably Elizabeth not. Elizabeth and I her mean, husband. If you're like, oh, and BT Dubs, my, like, bestest girlfriend is going to move in with us, like... Yeah, it's, it's you it know... Could, it could be a little awkward. We'll, yeah. we'll give him a little... A yeah, little, okay, we'll give him some credit. Some credit. I didn't hear anything yeah. bad about him, so we'll, we'll give mean, him some credit. I mean, nobody knows his name, it's okay. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what his name is. No, not at all. But he is he is the husband of Elizabeth Cady Stanton. That's right, and that's how he that's, shall be known. So, and I, oh, I love this too. So the two women had complementary skills. Anthony excelled at organizing, while Stanton had an aptitude for intellectual matters and writing. Anthony was dissatisfied with her own writing ability and wrote relatively little for publications. Uh, when historians illustrate her thoughts with direct quotes, they usually take them from speeches, letters, and diary entries. Because she hated writing. She hated but, writing. But Elizabeth loved it. I love it. They figured out how to coexist and how to be the most productive together, yeah. which is great. I mean, those are the best partnerships, right? Exactly. They sound like they sound like perfect for each other. They do sound perfect. For it each was other. fated that they meant to, meant it's each other. Beautiful. I love yes. it. I'm gonna keep reading from Wikipedia because, like, as you should. So we were just talking about um, Mr. Stanton. Mr. Stanton. Who cares what his name is? Yep. Um, so because Stanton was because. Elizabeth Stanton was homebound with seven children, while Susan Lord. was unmarried. I know, right? Yeah. I guess that's not a lot for back then. Yeah, but. I guess. So Susan was unmarried and free to travel. Another perk of being a spinster. For sure. Uh, Susan assisted Elizabeth by supervising her children while Elizabeth wrote. I mean, that's true support, right? Yeah. It takes a village, or it just takes Susan B. Anthony living with you. Okay, there is a good quote from Elizabeth's husband. Okay. So he said, Susan stirred the puddings, Elizabeth stirred up Susan, and then Susan stirs up the world. Wow. That's cool. That's real cool. Wait, hit, like, me, hit me with it again. Yeah, I will. All right. Susan stirred the puddings. Yes. Elizabeth stirred up Susan. Yes. And then Susan stirred up the world. I like it. Like, like this is interesting because really what it feels like they're saying is... Uh, Susan B. Anthony would not be who she was and would not have had the impact she had without Elizabeth Cady Stanton. No. And the other way around, too. And the other way around, too. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. I think that's just proof that you can have a relationship that's not a romantic one. Yeah. And have that be just as fulfilling, if not more fulfilling. Yeah, for sure. Because we're not saying that Spencers don't have relationships, right? No. Or... Thornback's not her relationship. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Again, all I'm picturing is, like, an animal running through the forest with, like, huge, like, razorback, sharp scale things sticking out of its back. But, um, you know, the Princess Bride, those horrible, like, animals, <laughs> big <laughs> things that they have. Uh, it's horrible. Thornback's. What a horrible, horrible word. Awful. Anyway, yeah. I mean, what we're saying is there was was and continues to be, though hopefully to a lesser extent, um, this pressure, it's even more than pressure. It's saying, like, if you don't get married by a certain age or period, you are something else, right? Right. Something else entirely. Something else entirely. No one can relate to you. No one can relate to you. You're so weird. Uh, You're so weird. You did it wrong, right? Like, yeah, you're, you, you, you're, you get the label. Your priorities are not in order. I mean, because what if you're a spinster and then you get married when you're 45? Like, you're, you were still a spinster. I think you're still and a spinster. until you got married, I guess you're still a well, spinster. I think if you have the mindset of, like, I'm, I'm choosing not to get married. I think yeah. if you're, like, desperately pining, then maybe spinster isn't the term that you should self-identify with. And, you know, no, but if you're other not married, people are still going to call you a spinster, and that's really what it was, because it's about what other people are labeling you So as. we want you to embrace that yes. that, that label. But yes. Yeah, so I think if you, if you do decide to get married later, right. but you marry someone that is, like, perfect, and you're like, yes, yes this I think this will make my life better. Yes. And I well, think Well, we're talking that, about redefining the word, right? Like, right. for a long time, um, bitch was a word that we did not want to embrace, and now being 100% that bitch is a great thing. Yeah. I think we should be 100% that spinster. Like, <laughs> embrace it. <laughs> you should. And realize the power in it, right? Because that's yes. really what, like, about being a bitch is about having that power and having something that other people look to and understand that it's it's uh it's a quality right it's something yeah. positive in your life and i think the same thing should happen with spinsterhood it's like what does this mean what is what are the freedoms as opposed to the um the negative 
connotations. Like it really shouldn't be a negative connotation, like whether it's a choice or it's just like, I mean, it always really is a choice in, in a lot of ways because you've chosen other things, but just seeing it in the different light, like let's take ownership of it. I mean, it's probably too late. I, I feel like we're about 30 years too late for this podcast. <laughs> I think, yeah. 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 We needed it a long time ago, but... I guess they didn't have them. But we're, yeah, we're doing it now. These two are just doing an amazing job. Yeah. They're, like, leading the charge. Leading the charge. In in New York. And then New York is, like, leading the way for the entire country. Yeah. This is amazing. I love this. So, apparently, Elizabeth Cady Stanton said of her and Susan's relationship, I forged the Thunderbolts. She fired them. I love it. I mean, I yeah. She's an amazing writer. Yeah. Elizabeth Cady Stanton was an amazing writer. And she, you know, she had seven children. She had a husband. And for her to be able to essentially have it all, she needed another woman. So, so yeah. So how are people looking at this? I mean, I would think that they would just, there would be a lot of raised eyebrows. I mean, I'm, sh- I'm sure they were. I mean, and people were already saying that Susan was trying to destroy the institution of marriage. A one woman crusade. Yeah. Well, maybe not a one woman, but you know. But yeah, that's like that was her yeah. goal. That was her goal, not like getting the vote for women or oh, that, giving them they were rights. That, they were saying, like, okay, this is all pretext. Why did I say it with that intonation? This is all pretextual. <laughs> and you are essentially, you're not about the vote. You're not about wages. Like, what you're really trying to do is you just hate men and you want to ruin the institution of marriage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's how they were. Once again, distracting, yeah. like, taking away from the conversation, veering off in a different direction. Right. Uh, I forgot which log- logical fallacy that is when you're... Is a red that, herring? Is that, a, or is that like a slippery slope? Like, well, if slippery you're saying... Slippery slope is like, if you're saying, um, if you... Well, if women start living together, then the whole world is going to become lesbians. And then we won't be able to reproduce and we'll die as a species. That's which, a slippery slope. Which I'm sure they were thinking. <laughs> which I'm sure they were thinking. Yeah. And uh, a red herring would be, you know, like, you're just trying to distract us to look away. Right. Yeah. Look, Go the other way. Look at this. Like She's, the pantaloons or whatever the fuck they were called. Yeah. Her bloomer dresses. Her bloomer dresses. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Same thing. They're... I mean, I, I just, this whole, this sentiment, like, I feel like this is, yeah. this this happens now. Yeah, like, attacking women for whatever. For yeah. what they look like, what they sound like, you know, whatever right. it is. Yeah. Um, and, and painting this thing onto her that she wasn't about. Yeah, I think exactly. she was trying to preserve marriage, if anything. She was just trying to make it equal so women could, like, divorce their husbands. She's not saying anything about marriage. Yeah, she it's just, a non-issue. Yeah. She's talking about voting. She's talking about wearing pants. <laughs> she's right. Ta- well, she's not even talking about wearing pants. She's literally talking about women making the same money for the same work and, right. and being able to vote. And being people. She's being just saying people. women are people, too. Women are people, so too. So women should have the right to say, wow, this is an abusive situation and I want to get out of it. Or right. I and want to I vote. I lose my children. Yeah. You know my drunk husband is beating the shit out of me and yeah. I want to be able to leave and have essentially fairness. She wants fairness. Yes. Yeah. And there is a, there's another quote coming up. It's very great. Ooh, more another, quotes. It's another, it's a really good quote. I love, I love quotes. We are straight white women. We love a quote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she's probably in her like mid thirties at this point, right? She's like getting up there. Yeah. Getting up there. Getting up there. She's, oh, good. she's younger than us. <laughs> <laughs> she's getting up there. So she's still working hard. Yeah. So okay. she's, you know, through the like, yeah, she kind of doesn't stop. So she she's, doesn't stop. Yeah. She's out there. She's writing. She's giving speeches. She's, you know, she's good. She's like traveling around the country and talking to groups of women. So she's just spreading this message all around. What does she get out of this? Like, does she actually get anywhere with her, with her traveling sales pitch? I think so. I think she was like adding to the number of people that were, uh, you know, were in favor of the cause. So she, you know, she's like, I don't know if she's recruiting, but definitely like she's talking about it so eloquently that she's getting other people involved, like men who claim that they were oppressed. So yeah, she's building like this for like this force. She's building momentum behind it. Momentum, consensus. Yeah. Okay. So she's traveling around. She's giving these speeches. She's getting people on board. um, And she finally, I'm assuming... Get some shit done. <sighs> Not really. Not really. Not really. <laughs> um, you know, she's making history here, but... Yeah, she is. 
So she has partnered up with Elizabeth. Yeah. And they wrote, they wrote some stuff to present to Congress. They wrote an amendment giving women the right to vote. That was in like in the 1870s. Okay. I mean, we kind of know how that turned out. We kind of know how that turned out. It didn't, I mean, it didn't, it didn't do anything, but. (laughs) <laughs> what she put <laughs> in her in Fair. yeah in her lifetime, she never got to see like her work pay off. But progress is slow, my friend. Yeah, it's real slow. But the the thing that she presented, it did eventually become the Nineteenth Amendment that gave women the right to vote. Amazing. So again, yeah. got these two women who, through their work together, led the charge and eventually turned into the Nineteenth Amendment, yeah. giving women the right to vote in nineteen twenty. Yeah. Um, and then you were saying she got pardoned. So this, a lot of women were doing this. It's not like she's like the only one who was doing this. So, so women couldn't vote. So they told suffragists, just show up at the polls and try to vote. Yeah. Okay. So in 1872, she's like, fuck it. I'm just going to go and try yeah. to vote. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she goes and tries to vote. She's not successful. Not successful. Gets arrested. But Declined. Yeah, yeah. But won't, she's not going to pay the fine. She didn't really do anything wrong. They're wrong. They won't let her vote. She stands her ground. Yeah. Does anything else happen? The Susan B. Anthony Museum rejects the pardon. Rejected. All right, you, you got to tell me more about this. Okay. Uh, so they wrote a statement on, on her behalf. I guess, you know, they know they know what her wishes were from her speeches and writings and stuff. It was partly that Anthony would not have wanted to be pardoned, according to some historians who've pointed out that the activist did not think she'd done anything wrong. Yeah, I, that makes a big... It's like when, it's yeah. like when you're, you're in a relationship with, like, an abusive boyfriend, and he's like, it's okay, I'm not mad at you anymore. And you'd be like, you shouldn't have been mad at me in the first place, asshole. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit like that. Okay. Joining those voices is the exec- executive director of this National Susan B. Anthony Museum and House in Rochester, New York. Objection. Their letter starts. Objection. Mr. President, Susan B. Anthony must decline your offer of a pardon. So the statement continues. Anthony wrote in her diary in 1873 that her trial for voting was, quote, the greatest outrage history ever witnessed, end quote. She was not allowed to speak as a witness in her own defense because she was a woman. Okay. Okay. What? Yeah, what? Wow. Wow. Like, as an attorney, I have never heard that women were not allowed to speak in their own defense. That, (sighs) at the same time, I'm not surprised at all. No. So, at the conclusion of arguments, uh, Judge Hunt, whatever Judge Hunt, dismissed the jury and pronounced her guilty. She was outraged to be denied so a trial by jury. Get trial she didn't get a trial by jury. <laughs> okay, at first I thought she was really like overstating it when she said the greatest outrage in history ever witnessed was her trial. Um, but now I don't know. She's 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 got some reasons. She got some reasons. She's got yeah. some reasons. So the uh, the president of the Susan B. Anthony Museum, she suggested the best way to honor Anthony would to just take a clear stance against voter suppression and advocating for human rights for all. She doesn't need your pardon, Trump. Yeah, just, she doesn't need your pardon. She doesn't need your pardon to maybe just do these things, the things that she stood for. Instead of saying, I, as a white man, say that you didn't do anything wrong. So we're moving along in her life. We're moving along. She's getting up there. She's getting up there. She is a force of nature, though. Like she, Oh, for sure. I mean, she might be aging, but like she does not slow down. She's still, you know, she's still out there talking and, and giving speeches and attending meetings and trying to change people's minds. So she really continued to work until the end of her life. She was yeah, she dedicated her life to yeah. suffragist movement. Yeah, like but up like up until like a few years before she died, she was out there giving speeches. Like she was the, this was her life. So she died in 1906 of heart failure. At that point, she lived with her sister and with Elizabeth. So she, you know, she's forming these different kinds of relationships. She had a full life. I mean, the idea right. that if you're a Spencer, you can't have a full life. Um, it's actually kind of funny because, like, you could argue, one could argue that, you know, she had a fuller life than a lot of other women. Yeah. You know? I, I think so. Like, she got to see the whole country. She got to be like this, you know, she was like the head of a movement. Yeah. And to get to spend, like... So much time with your best friend. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. that's pretty cool. That's pretty she cool. clearly probably had an impact on Elizabeth Cady Stanton's children, you know, even oh, though yeah. she wasn't their their mother, capital M. 
But she the, did mother them. She did, like, provide yeah, them. Like she, sure. she She yeah. played a big part in raising them. Yeah, for sure. And you know what? That's what people always say. Like, well, if you don't get married and have children, who will take care of you in your old age? That's a really shitty reason for having children. And this just illustrates, like, you don't have to. There, yeah. are, there are other ways to, like, have a, a, you know, a good end of life that isn't just loneliness. She was lucky in that she did have a, have a biological sister, and she clearly had a sister in Elizabeth Cady Stanton. She had a full life. She wasn't just sitting around no. drinking tea and petting cats. Which all, sounds great. I'm also not going to knock amazing. that, but... I We need to do a podcast on a woman who just sat around and drank tea and pet cats. We um, do. Because... <laughs> that sounds amazing. You know what the most important thing is, is to live the life you want to live. Yeah. It's the gift of independence. That's the gift of it. She missed a little, she missed it by a little bit. You said she died in 1906. She died in 1906. Yeah. And then 14 years later, women had the right to vote. So, I mean, I think she would have loved to. But she knew we were heading that way. Yeah. She knew we were heading that way. She knew that she left the movement in good hands. Yeah. Do you want to, do you want to let Susan have the last word? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, We shall someday be heated. And when we shall have our amendment to the Constitution of the United States, everybody will think it was always so. Just exactly as many young people think that all the privileges, all the freedom, all the enjoyments which women now possess, always were hers. They have no idea of how every single inch of ground that she stands upon today has been gained by the hard work of some little handful of women of the past. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is why we should vote, which is why, you know, I got to choose whether I was wearing a dress or not. I drove my own car here today. Right. I'm going to vote in November. She's so right. Like, we do take this for granted. Completely. It just, it just, feel like, because in well, our lifetime. There's so much of it we can't even think. I mean, the fact that right. I just only named three things is ridiculous. Right. I mean, the fact, the fact that it's, like, the middle of a day on Saturday, and you and I are just, like, hanging out and doing this, as opposed to, like, I don't know, brushing the hair of children who are <laughs> screaming. Beating the dust out of rugs. Exactly. Um baking. We said earlier, she, like, she was a very quotable woman. Super quotable. Yeah. There's a lot of smart shit, she said. Yeah, give me some more. All right, here's one. I declare to you that women must not depend upon the protection of man, but must be taught to protect herself. And there I take my stand. Yep. Oh, and she rhymed it even? Very nice. And this one, this one's just, just real clear, not very poetic. There never will be complete equality until women themselves help to make laws and elect lawmakers. Yeah, have you watched that documentary on Netflix about, um, it's like about AOC and Paula Jean Swearingen and all these women who are running for the House? No. It was like before AOC got elected. Um, it's called Knock Down the House. It's on Netflix. If you haven't watched it, you have to watch it. I, it's yeah, so I'm, good. I mean, obviously AOC got elected, but Paula Jean Swearingen is running, running again. Um, and I'm not in West Virginia, but if you are in West Virginia, vote for Paula Jean, man. Because knock down the house. Because women have to make the laws and elect the lawmakers. Yeah, I mean, we're still in that same fight. There still just are not enough women running and definitely not enough women being elected. Right. So um, we got to keep the fight going. Yeah. For Susan B. Anthony. Yeah, thanks, Susan. And each other. Thanks for reminding us. Thanks, Susan. Oh, I like this one. No man is good enough to govern any woman without her consent. Truth. I mean, I think even with her consent. Yeah. I mean, a man shouldn't govern a woman. Look, if you're into Ever. that kind of thing. I guess, yeah. Um, and I think this, this, this is true about her too. Cautious, careful people always casting about to preserve their reputations can never affect a reform. Mm-hmm. She did change her out of the bloomer dresses and wear regular dresses, but like, you know, that she's wasn't really for her reputation though. That was no. just because she knew it was a distraction and she wanted to keep people focused. Right. But you know, she's, she's still like, even though people didn't like what she was saying, she yeah. said it anyway. She knew what the message was. Yeah. Stay on message. Right. She did. She, she stayed on message. She's really good at marketing. Yeah. Um, and because she's, because she's badass. She's badass. Um, I have encountered riotous mobs and have been hung in effigy, but my motto is men's rights are nothing more. Women's rights are nothing less. Yeah. I think that's one of the problems is people always think like feminism means, inequality yeah. like they think you know that it means that we're just going to make you know right make men's lives miserable yeah exactly but it's, it's no not. one likes a miserable man no 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 we're saying we're all people we're all people that's it that's all yeah. we're saying exactly um and that's probably like one of her most famous quotes um and there is also a podcast um, that i'm going to recommend i actually haven't listened to it yet but it has to be really, really good. Okay. Um, there's no way that it can't be. Uh, it's called And Nothing Less. 
Oh. Uh, it's all about the suffragist movement. Amazing. Um, Rosario Dawson and Retta. Retta from oh, yeah. Parks and Recreation. She's funny. Yeah. They host it, so it awesome. has to be amazing. I hope that they are the Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony of today. I do, too. <laughs> Maybe they are. I hope they're best friends. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I think we've learned some things today. We I have learned so. that like being a spinster means you can have an awesome life. You can be impactful. You can have amazing relationships. Yeah. You can get some shit done. Right. You, you, know. you might even have more freedom to get shit done. And like the fact that she said independence is happiness kind of implies that she was happy. She lives a happy life. I think that she was because like, like up to her dying day, she was out there. She was getting around. She like took a vacation to uh, somewhere in the mountains and she was like riding mules. But she was like a 70 year old woman. And she was like, yeah, let's do this. I'm going to ride this mule into the Grand Canyon. Amazing. Amazing. Um, so look, I think we learned a lot today. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot we didn't learn to so go out and learn it. Right. Yeah. Listen, watch that. AOC documentary. Yes. Go listen to that podcast. Learn about history and then learn, learn about, about the current. The current situation yeah. that we're in. Right. Because um, that's the whole point. Susan B. Anthony point. fought so that. Yeah. We we're can, building on it. Yes. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. And she's a better woman than I. But. Me too. That's why we're still talking about her today. If you have a favorite spinster you'd like us to discuss, email us. Go to our website. It's spinsterlife.com. Follow us on Instagram. We're going to have some quotes there for you. Quotes. Quotes. So as we've mentioned, this podcast is going to be talking about some of the most intriguing and important spinsters throughout history, both past and present. And it wouldn't be fair if we didn't include ourselves. No. We are groundbreaking spinsters, Eva. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> so in this week's installment of Why Are You a Spinster? Amy, tell me one of the reasons you are a spinster. Good, bad, and ugly. I don't want a man to tell me how to shape my pubic hair. That's fair. It's, you know, it's my, it's my body. It's my choice. It's my time. It's you having to clean your bathtub. Right. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And yeah. if I want to do it for me, great. But This is the package it comes wrapped in. If you don't yeah. like it, go find... Yeah, go find someone else. Go find someone else. Yeah. I don't... I, I just... Yeah, I don't want to be swayed one way or the other exactly by a man's uh judgment of my you want to push your way i want to push my way yeah uh eva one reason you're single one reason i'm single um i like to sleep with my dog there's not enough room in my bed like i like to sprawl my dog likes to sprawl there's just not room for a third being i'm not saying i want to be celibate rather when i just don't want them to sleep over so we both get what we want he gets to sleep in the middle of the bed yeah and I get to uh, figure out a way to fit in the bed with him. <laughs> and, and I'm not going to change that. All right. Well, happy spinster life, Amy. Happy spinster life, Eva. All right. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time.